Hi fish fam, today I want to talk to you about one of the easiest to culture aquarium live foods, the scud. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, and go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. The scuds are a generic name for a variety of species in North America, it's probably going to be Hylella Azteca, there are a few other Hylella species, but people usually don't have them because they're tiny. In Europe, you're probably going to be going for Gamerus pulex. That's the largest one at about 2.1 centimeters. There are some smaller variants out there, but if you're going to buy them, that's probably what you're going to find. You can get cultures of these online. Usually they run about 12 to $20 US through eBay. You don't have to worry about them dying off in the mail. They're pretty hardy. I've done some experiments where I've put some in a breather bag with some food that was rotting, and I left it for over a week. I came back and not a single one of them had died. So they tolerate ammonia pretty well. If you want to try to get some yourself, whatever your local variant is, is probably going to live in whatever the closest slow-moving river is. Go out with a piece of cucumber or squash, sink it, give it about 20 minutes, come back and scoop it up with a fine mesh net, and you're probably going to get something. Now, you do run the risk of parasites doing this, but all of the parasites for these that I'm aware of discolor the scuds themselves to try to attract fish. So as long as you get rid of anything that's even the slightest bit funny color compared to the rest of them, then the chances of you having an infected culture are pretty low. If you really want to be cautious after that, give them some time to breed, and once they do, pull the adults out. At that point, you know that you're not going to have any of these parasites because the parasites need the fish to complete their life cycle. They're not going to be able to breed within these guys, at least not the ones that you need to worry about. Culturing them is pretty straightforward. You just get some dechlorinated water and any size of a container starting about one gallon and going up. I've got mine in a 20 gallon tank, which is a little bit of overkill because they came out of a five gallon bucket recently. So there's not a whole lot of them in here compared to what there could be or what there will be a month from now, but they're doing very well. They do use a lot of calcium for their shell development. So you wanna make sure that you have some harder water. If you live someplace with very soft water, Add in a little bit of limestone or some cuttlefish bone or something like that to dissolve into the water and keep the mineral content high so that they can keep building healthy shells. If you don't and you have soft water, they will use up all of the calcium in the water. The water will have a pH drop and it'll start dissolving their shells and that'll kill them. You want to make sure that these guys have something that they can perch on. So you can add in, again, limestone works very well for this. Sponges that sink work very well for this. I like to use java moss because they'll nibble at it, they will eat any of the algae that's growing on it, and it makes it very easy for me to harvest them. You can use a sponge filter. You can see that I've got a sponge filter here. The sponge filter really just acts to help keep the water clear enough that I can tell what's going on. Without it, because I have a light on very frequently for this tank, I end up with a pea soup green water, and I don't like putting that into my fish tanks. So doing this cuts back on what they can eat naturally, but it makes a much cleaner looking culture, and I prefer that a lot. You don't have to do a lot of water changes for these guys because they are very tolerant of low levels of ammonia. You don't have to cycle the tank. You can just add them in, and the tank will cycle naturally based on their own waste. Harvesting them is really simple. Whatever it is that you put in here for them to sit on, pull it out, shake it off in some water, some of them will come off in the water, and you can pour that water straight into the fish tank. I like to use the java moss because I can grab a handful of the java moss, drop the java moss into the tank. The scuds will, over the course of about 20 or 30 minutes, swim out of the java moss, and my fish can naturally hunt them as they come out rather than having a swarming feeding behavior. And that helps a lot with things like the new wild angels that I've got that don't compete well with the other angelfish that I've put in there to try to prompt feeding. So allowing them to come out slowly ensures that my large wild fish get the food that they need rather than being overrun by the ones that know that I'm feeding them and are looking for it. Scuds will eat just about anything. I like to feed mine bits of cucumber, uh, squash they will eat. They're not completely fond of, but they're not going to turn anything down. Bell pepper, algae wafers, little vegetable-based cichlid pellets, whatever you've got around 
they will eat. You just don't want to overdo it. You want them to be able to finish whatever you feed them within 24 to 48 hours. And at that point, you want to take it out so that it doesn't foul the water and create odors. If you've got a good sponge filter, that's going to be less of an issue because it's going to metabolize the stuff that these rotting food is producing. But if you don't, if you're just running one with some sitting sponges and rocks and you're just planning on letting that sit, pull the food out so that things don't go gross on you. They do grow better with a heated tank. Even if you get one from a northern climate, chances are they're going to grow much faster with a preset 78 degree heater. They don't use a whole lot of power that way, so you can do that and you can have the cost of keeping these guys up be essentially nothing. You just get yourself an LED bulb, one of the little 15 watt heaters, something like a five gallon bucket that you double up so that there's an air pocket in between it so that it holds on to some more of the heat will also work very well. They make a good garbage disposal system if you've got them in another tank. Anytime you trim your aquarium plants, throw the clippings in, they will eat it and that will generate more food for you. If you've got a problem with duckweed, throw the duckweed in, they will nibble at it. It will help create food for them and convert the pest plant into food for, you, for your fish. You don't need a large culture of these to get started. Anything from about five to 10 of these, chances are you're gonna be okay. You're not gonna be worried about uh, necessarily the long-term genetic diversity of these guys, because even if you order a culture of 500 of them, they're all basically gonna be siblings and there's not gonna be any genetic diversity anyways. You're not worried about them necessarily surviving anything because you're hopefully not going to be introducing anything to the tank that's going to be changing and introducing anything that they really have to fight off. From what I can tell watching my fish, they enjoy these a great deal. They like them almost as much as they like bloodworms, but they're a whole lot more nutritious than bloodworms are. Bloodworms are really just empty calories. These guys are a lot closer to the kinds of things that your fish would be getting naturally. So these combined with a couple of the other foods that I'm going to be going over in the next couple of days should give you a really well-balanced nutrition for any fish that you enjoy doing live food for. If you just want to use them as an occasional treat, then they're also great for that. They don't take up a whole lot of room. And again, they're super easy to culture. They're really hard to kill off. Even if you accidentally kill most of them, if you've got five or six of them left, you can bounce back and they bounce back very quickly. Let me know what you guys use. What's your favorite live food? Cover some more of them in the next coming videos. Until then, take it easy.